Sony USA has published the specifications for the A90J Master Series OLED, and there is one key statistic that strongly suggests the use of the new, brighter OLED panel from LG Display. I'm also going to explain in this video why in this case, a higher peak brightness doesn't actually increase the risk of OLED burn-in. Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. If you look on the Sony USA website under the specifications of the Sony A90J Master Series OLED, you will see that the annual power consumption figure for the 55-inch model is 185 kWh, whereas the annual power consumption figure for the 65-inch version is 228 kWh. Now, let's compare with Sony's previous Master Series OLED, the A9G, and we can see here that the annual power consumption for the 55-inch A9G is 233 kWh, whereas the figure for the 65-inch model is 280 kWh. Now, if you manage to do some calculations, and I have done so in advance, you may be able to work out that these figures represent a 20% drop in annual power consumption for the 55-inch A90J model compared with the 55-inch A9G, and an 18.5% decrease when we talk about the 65-inch models. This corresponds very closely to the 20% increase in efficiency touted by LG Display when they were describing their next-generation OLED panels, which we now know is done through the addition of a new green emitting layer and also the substitution of hydrogen for deuterium in the blue OLED compound. Now, when comparing such power consumption figures, I think it is only fair that we do it within the same company, within the same brand from year to year because let's say another company may be using the energy from the power supply to power the speakers or they may be driving their OLEDs differently. So I think you know, it is only fair that we compare Sony OLED models and from the preliminary figures given out by Sony themselves, we can certainly see an increase in energy efficiency of nearly 20% by going from the A9G to the A90J, strongly suggesting the use of this newer, brighter OLED panel from LG Display. Now, when I published my video talking about the 1300 nits that was achieved by the Sony A90J in a demonstration event in China, some of you commented that such a high peak brightness will definitely increase the risk of OLED burn-in, and I want to explain why this is not going to be the case for the Sony A90J. We need to kick things off with the basics to understand how OLED generates light. So an OLED display is made up of numerous layers of OLED emitting devices, and these contain the organic OLED compound. And if you apply a current to this OLED emitting devices, then they will generate light, but they will be used up as well. So the luminance that a OLED display is capable of is inversely proportional to its lifetime. By that I mean you can actually apply a stronger electricity current to the OLED stack and generate higher peak brightness, but you will also use up the OLED material faster, therefore shortening the lifetime. The way I would like to explain it is like, think of it like fuel in your car. Let's say you have a full tank of fuel and you want to drive to Barnard Castle to get your eyesight tested. And you can get there maybe in four hours if you drive at your regular speed, you know, and that will be the most efficient way in terms of your fuel efficiency. Maybe you are getting 50 miles per gallon. But Let's say you have a few toddlers behind, you know, keep asking, are we there yet? Are we there yet? You're just really frustrated out of your mind and you want to step on the pedal and get there faster. So you try to cut your journey down to two hours of journey time. But that will mean that you will have a lower MPG because, you know, you're stepping on the pedal more and therefore you will use up 
the fuel much faster. The same principle applies to the OLED emitting device layers. The stronger the electricity current that you apply to the OLED material, you can get higher peak brightness. But that will also mean that the lifetime of the OLED display will be shorter. Now, if you remember from the past few years, OLED TVs on the market have a rated peak brightness of around 700 nits. And this is actually by design. I think, you know, LG Display have done a lot of experiments and they feel that at the current level of technology that they have, if they strive for a peak brightness of 700 nits on a 10% window, it will give a lifetime of around 30,000 hours to 50,000 hours. Now, to put 30,000 hours conservatively into context, let's say if you actually watch TV four hours a day, then 30,000 hours actually equates to 20 years of use. And the way the 30,000 hours is calculated is that, you know, that is defined as the brightness of the OLED screen dropping by half. So at 30,000 hours, it doesn't mean that your OLED TV is dead. It means that it will just not be as bright. It will be half as bright. So imagine that you know, you're watching an OLED TV for four hours a day and at 20 years, you're still using it. Maybe you're not tempted by the latest and greatest, unlike myself. Then you stick with the same OLED TV for 20 years, watching four hours a day. You know, at the end of 20 years, you can still get a watchable picture, only that it won't be as bright as when you actually bought it new. That's where the 30,000 hours of lifetime comes from. And so I think, you know, the lifetime of an OLED display is not really a problem these days. And the concern is OLED burning, which is to do with differential aging of the different OLED stack emitter. Let's say, you know, if you display a red logo for a longer period, you will use up the red emitting layer devices material. And that means that, you know, it won't be as bright and it causes what is known as OLED burn-in or permanent screen burn. But there is nothing to stop, you know, LG display or even an OLED manufacturer to drive even stronger electricity current to get even higher peak brightness. So I don't think, you know, there is anything physically that may stop someone from getting 2000 nits from an OLED TV. But obviously the lifespan will be shorter, maybe even down to what, two minutes. And if you can only last two minutes, you know, it is really par for the course, you know, for a friend I know. But you get what I mean. The luminance that an OLED display is capable of is inversely proportional to the lifetime. But this year, what LG Display has done is to develop a new OLED panel which is more efficient. And this actually has been branded by LG Electronics, who is one of their customers, as OLED Evo. And I don't know why LG Display hasn't actually come up with a marketing name for it. So I will have to actually call it, you know, this higher peak brightness OLED panel. So what they've actually done is to use a combination of two methods to increase the current efficiency or OLED efficiency of this new OLED EVO panel. Let's call it OLED EVO panel. And the first method is to add a new green emitting layer. And the second method is by substituting the hydrogen in the blue OLED compound with deuterium, which has lower vibrational energy and therefore more heat resistance. So what this means is that, you know, previously, if you need to apply a certain amount of current to get a certain amount of peak brightness, you can get the same level of peak brightness now by applying less current with this new OLED panel by LG Display, and that is the beauty of it. So if you apply the same current, you know, as before, you are actually getting a higher peak brightness, and that means that you are actually not increasing the risk of burning. I hope you understand what I mean without a chart to illustrate it. I wish, you know, I can hire an animator to draw out some charts for me, but hopefully you understand what I mean, because OLED efficiency or current efficiency is measured in candelas per ampere. And let's say 
originally the candelas per ampere is 10 candelas per ampere so for each ampere that you actually apply to the OLED stack you are getting 10 candelas or maybe say 10 nits right so let's say you're applying one ampere you're getting 10 nits now what you are able to do currently is to actually apply one ampere now and you are getting 12 nits now so you're getting even higher peak brightness with the same amount of current or conversely you can keep the light output at 10 nits and you only need say what 0.8 amperes of current you know therefore saving you more energy and prolonging the lifetime of the OLED display even more so that's the reason why the Sony A90J won't be more prone to OLED burn-in despite a higher peak brightness. It is because it is going to be using the newer, brighter OLED panels from LG Display as suggested by the annual power consumption figure that has been published by Sony USA. If you'd like to watch more videos on next-gen display technologies, I created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it, and I will see you in the next video.